Boys, 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 what's happening? Um, this is going to be another pre-build video, um, pre-release build guide for Grenadus. Uh, he's our newest tank unit. He's coming on March 31st, 2022. He is going to be a huge tank. He's going to be an awesome damage mitigator for himself as well as a bunch of for the party. Um, and in this build guide, I don't think I'm going to focus too much on um, his offensive prowess. I think his defensive prowess is more the utility and usability of him, um, similar to Shift Gorm and Ruto being a tank unit in this game, doesn't always make them useful in every battle, but in certain aspects in super hard content or team survivability and utility, as well as in arena, um, they're very, very useful. And I think he adds to that. Um, I think he's a combination of them and can be an incredible tank in his own right. So why don't we get into his skills? Um, we're going to go over his kit a little bit, and then I'll show you when we get back into the game um, what exactly I'm going to put on him. So let's look at his skill animations first. Um, S1, pretty quick, a little bit ranged, if you saw. Uh, just a little bit ranged. Um, being in front of him, this is probably line of sight, pretty small cone AOE type deal that we've seen on a lot of skills before. But... Um, Nothing crazy. Five hits. Again, not a physical DPS unit. Um, no. Nothing, nothing crazy on his, in his kit that's going to scream. You know, I'm going to do a ton of damage. But as for his S2, um, quite a bit, a nice AoE. And this is his taunt skill. Um, and we'll get into that in a second. But this is his S2, his taunt skill. Eight hits. Um, he has a chance, just like Ruto on his S2, to taunt the entire team. Or it's based, you know, per unit, based on their mind stat. Um, forcing them to attack him and, and ignoring everything else. So that's super, super nice to mm, manipulate the AI of the enemy defenses, especially for places like Arena, um, to force the entire enemy team on your own one unit. So definitely very, very useful. Um, as to his S3, kind of a huge charge. Um, we'll get to see how big that AoE is because it is gonna be 16 hits and if he can clear some some stuff some waves uh might be kind of nice but i don't see that much offensive power in this um so let's go back and take a peek at the whole thing yeah nothing nothing that stands out in his s3 it is 16 hits sure um but we will see how that works imperial force this is gonna be his s4 his special um huge utility special and we'll talk about why in a second but this I do think this is probably it, it, so. What I want you to pay attention to right here is look at the buffs down on the units and see if they're going to be unique or not. Right. So there's a non-damage special, whatever. That's fine. Utility-wise, though, it's going to be huge for defensive. These are unique. I've never seen this one before. I've never seen either of these before. So my guess is that these are unique buffs that stack with many, many other damage and mitigation buffs, such as. Things like M Theory's Alt and M Theory's S2, Sevi's Alt for the all damage, um, things like that. So I, I'm very excited to see how crazy the damage mitigation you can get from his special, stacked with other units that give damage mitigation. So like him and M I, I feel especially after his special are going to be a disgusting, disgusting duo for um, mitigating damage. Um. All right, let's talk about his traits real quick. Imperial Anthem. Regular give all allies a physical attack damage taken minus 10%. Damage from bosses minus 20% buff. This reads and reminds me of M Theory is like regularly gives them it's a like a reapplicable buff um, and checks every about six seconds. That's going to check, you know, if all allies have this or you know re re reapply this to all allies in case they've they've been already dead and they didn't re revive with it. So I my assumption is every six seconds this is going to be reapplied just to make sure that the entire party has it at any given time or as, as often as possible um only one weapon is equipped physical damage plus 60 percent damage cap is fifteen thousand. short sure. yes he has some damage cap it it's nowhere near because we're going to be pretty much focusing him on him as being a tank there's really nowhere near damage potential as many other units of course if he can provide a, a bit of damage to help the team sure but I don't think that's worth focusing on, to be honest. Trait 2, Genbu. Um, if attribute resistance is at least one, won't flinch from that type of magic attack, which is crazy. Um, now, in PvE, we don't have that many crazy magic attacker bosses, but for things like PvP, 
if you force your um, Granitus to have positive attribute resistance for every resistance, um, <laughs> you can possibly make him immune to flinching on every single magic attack. Um, and there are some arcs that give attribute resistance. There are some arcs that counter attribute drops. So kind of cool that you can uh, pretty much force his his hand in uh, being non-flinching to every type of magic. Second part, chance to nullify long range physical attack damage taken. Cool. That is something new that we have not seen. Chance to nullify long range physical damage attack or attack damage taken. Uh, we've had chances to, you know, decrease it, but not nullify. So that's dope. Nullify defensive piercing effects. Uh, we've had this on the Stone World arc from the um, Dr. Stump Lab being the Stone World passive that has a part of this. This is the first time we've seen on a unit, I believe, that we've seen defensive piercing effects nullified. Um, kind of cool. Nullify attribute ignore cut effects. This means that things like Trishula um, will not affect his attribute, will not ignore attributes against him. Things like if Merity will not cut the resistance whenever they're attacking. And things like, you know, Shivzekis, which cut attributes, which cuts attributes. Amelia cuts attributes um, when they're attacking. So he will not be affected by any of that. Whether or not that's like huge widespread, uh, and I believe this is something for Arena, like that's nothing crazy. What he's missing here, and, I, and what I'm gonna like spoil by not going through the rest of his kit, is he's missing. If he had Slayer nullification, that would be the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. Um, but you know, he doesn't have that, so. We're not going to focus on it, but that would be that would have been absurd. Um, we're going to get into his skills now. So, what he has here is some crazy, crazy uniques. And before that, actually, his abilities. My fault. Got ahead of myself. Um, his granted this is abilities. So, skill one we talked about: frontal, long range, earth combo. Pretty small range. Um, like y-axis wise, I think he's is going to be more. Cone shaped, you know, small AOE, but you know, long distance uh, could be good, but we'll have to see about that. That that requires testing. His S2 though, uh, wide area earth combo attack around unit. This is again similar to Ruto's S2, um, based on the mind stat, and you know, people have done testing. I don't have the calculations on hand how high you need to be for your mind to like guarantee, but I believe it's like. When it's 4,000 versus like a thousand mind, um, it's like an 80% chance to get the taunt. When it's even, it's about like 25 or 30% chance. So, you know, definitely jack up his mind if you want to be taunting the entire team. Um, can be used to funnel the enemy team, especially for PvP, into your own unit, as well as for PvE. I mean, PvE enemies and bosses generally have a root and sometimes have extremely high mind stats, so it might not be that useful. But having him as a lower tank by himself, anyways, is going to be a huge. Huge boost to your, um, you know, your glass cannon survivability. Um, skill three spiral charge instantly closes the gap for wider area of combo attack. Give mine plus twenty percent buff to all allies. Damage cut plus four thousand. I think this is really cool. Um, being a tank and getting, being able to get into the enemy's faces right away, um, instead of running, is super high value. Um, giving the mind plus twenty percent buff to all allies. I assume this is probably a generic buff because it doesn't. No, I haven't seen an action. Of course, that will need testing, but giving a straight up mind buff to all your allies just for flat out using a skill is great. Um, special is the Imperial Force, and this is what I was talking about before. Give all allies a skill slash special damage taken minus 50% and won't flinch from physical attacks buffs. Okay, so the first thing that happened during that special that we saw before was the flinch from physical attacks buff, which we've seen for, I think, when Ruto dies. I think he gives the entire team that as well. Um... I think that's the same buff that pops up on Mikasa when she pops her physical attack nullification buff for flinching. Um, but we have not seen a skill slash special damage taken, like buffs for the entire team. So those two buffs at the end, I think, will be stackable with many, many others. As long as it's generally a unique icon, it will stack. So I'm excited to use that as utility for sure. Mm. So for the skills, this is some crazy shit going on here. Um, the amount of team-wide damage mitigation and like defensive stat boosts are crazy. So let's go. Let's just go through it. Imperial Guards, Charisma, all allies, defense plus 30%. Of course, this is a Charisma. 
Oh, this is not going to be stackable with any other charismas. You can only have one active at any certain time for your team. That's a lot of defense. Um, now, that is defense plus 30%, not of his defense. So if it if your teammate has low defense at, a, like, at the first bit anyways, it's not going to be that much of an increase. But for teammates that have high defense, it's for him, like Shift Gorm and Runto, if you're running double tank build, they're all going to get massive defense boost. And especially just for him alone, as being your allure tank and mitigating all that damage, that's a big boost. Immovable stance, flat out 30%. Defense, defense up. Uh, strength minus twenty percent. Since since we don't really, and I'm not considering his offensive prowess as a, a deal breaker. Strength minus twenty percent is fine. More likely to be targeted by enemies. That's assumedly plus one allure stack. So keep that in mind. That's plus one so far. Roar. This is something new. Um, remove all strength and defense in mind. Debuff from all allies once per wave. That's cool. Um, I don't. <laughs> this is. Here's the thing. If you can use this in arena off the rip when people have like, I don't know, Theo off the rip or, you know, those Gen debuffs off the rip. Using this as soon as you start the battle is kind of nutty. Um, basically taking all of those stat debuffs off your all off of all of your allies. That's crazy. Um, I'm going to have a lot of fun testing that for sure in arena. Guard bash, guard equipped. When guard activates, chance to deal damage to nearby enemies and make most enemies flinch. This is kind of like, it seems like an upgraded version of guard impact, kind of, um, where it not only makes them flinch, um, but it also deals damage. Now, this also says when guard activate, a chance to deal enemy damage. So, this isn't going to happen for every time they guard. It's just when the first one activates, not sure. That's going to need testing for sure, but I, I really, really like this. I do wish he had guard impact as well to have that, like, you know, double chance of flinching, but, you know, nothing crazy. Um, Fierce Instructor. EXP received after battle plus 100%. Not stackable. Now, this is a topic of conversation that we were having in Discord earlier about how good this is. So, the unfortunate part of this is that it is locked to him specifically. So, you cannot get this boost unless you have him in the party in battle. Now, where is this effective? If you don't, if you're using an already, if you're already using a leveling unit to like, you know, mod, let's, let's, for example, bring Maja into the battle. Um, if you're using the Maja farm for Heart of the Temple and you're already nuking the stage and using EXP up two, um, you're getting about the same as if you'd add him along with your Maja in the leveling unit. Um, in, in as the third unit and then having this as part of the boost it's about the same thing so if you're using exp up two and using a leveling unit it's not going to make that much, much of a difference but if you're using him in places like a friend support if you have your leveling units and you have him as a friend support getting that plus 100 with also not cutting the overall exp that's where he's going to be useful. The second place he's going to be useful is going to be in tower. If you have him, him in your main squad all of that EXP after the battle is going to be applied to all 12 units. So, if you have him in that battle, that doubles the entire experience received by every single one of those units. I think that's probably the best place for him. If you're using him in the main squad, which tanks are very good in tower anyways, you, you kind of want, if you're just, you can't nuke everything right away, a tank in tower is going to, first of all, a high alert stack tank is going to, you know, make all the enemies go after him which makes your glass cannons easier your supports easier to survive and everyone else at the end of battle gets 100 more experience hell yeah great for leveling um focus will duration of strength defense into mind debuffs take minus 50 percent this is the first time we see something like this something like this and since debuffs usually last about 30 seconds 40 seconds huge huge value out of this i think um not necessarily for pve again for pvp <laughs> A lot of things are, a lot of, especially for tanks, it's going to be PvP related. Either extremely hard content or PvP related. Um, they're not really generally useful for, you know, your run of the mill story wave clearing kind of stuff. But for harder content, absolutely. Chivalrous Mindset Spear. Um, this is interesting because we've had chivalrous, some chivalrous mindset before, but it's only been swords. So I think from the main service, they've decided that they're going to start adding these uh, little additives on the end of Chivalrous Mindset for Spear. Um, and this is just cool. So the other one they're going to change back to Chivalrous Mind Owen Sword. This is going to be for Spear. So when Spear Strength and Armor is equipped, 
both the spear strength and the armor defense plus 50%. So the armor defense goes up 50%, the spear strength goes up 50%. Um, that's just nice to have in general, just for armors that have, you know, 300 plus defense base, um, that's gonna be a nice little boost. Guard vitals, first thing, first time we've seen this, critical damage taken by 7%, great. Resolve at max, awesome, defense of mine plus 15% each, solid value for him. Stone enhance, this is one of the first ones that we've seen I don't care about the earth attack damage. What I care about is the physical damage taken minus 15%. That's another stack of physical damage taken dropped, um, which is kind of crazy. Now, with those unique said uh, said and done, we're gonna go, go we're gonna go over what we can possibly add on him in game. All right, boys, we're in game. Um, I'm gonna use Gorm here to use as my little template for what we're gonna build for Granitus. Um, as you see on the right over here, we're looking at, you know, all of these skills that have SE listed and stuff, stuff that I'm going to be adding to his kit, um, totaling up to 90 SE. And the rest that's not listed as any SE are going to be what he gets innate in his kit for Grenadus. Um, so, why don't we get into it? So the first couple things that I'm going to add to him is, you know, I have extra SE, SC left over from, from the kit that I'm using. Um, but I want to add some HP up, some defense ups to, you know, max out his. So, so unsurprising. Actually, surprisingly, he only has resolve ups in his kit, both resolve up three and max. Um, he doesn't actually have any defense ups. He has auto fort, sure, and he has a bunch of defensive other passes. But what those get multiplied into are his base base stats. And I want to jack up his defense as much as I possibly can. So he doesn't have defense up one, two, three, four, max or max in his kit. So I'm adding one, three, four, and max um, for a total of what is that, fifteen SC. So definitely pumping that into him. I am going to be adding up HP at max to boost his HP quite a bit, or up 20%. But the next up he has, has in his kit is Resolve 3 and Resolve max, are, which are both 8 and 15%, both to defense and mind. So that's going to be nice to have for his statistics, for his stats. Um, he does have guard and steel guard in his kit. Guard being, you know, a 10% chance to guard. Um, steel guard being, I believe it's 25%, 50%. Damage reduction, one of those two, um, or while guarding damage reduction. And then we're going to add Vigilance. Vigilance is going to be another 2SC for another 10% guard rate. So at, at base, he's going to have 10% guard. Um, he has heal guard in his kit, which is nice to see because, you know, I, that is a one of the main components of, of the full guard kit is having, you know, getting healed whenever you're guarding. Magic guard I did add in here. Um, this is going to have play a big role in to his effectiveness as a tank, I believe, um, for which which way I'm going to be building him. Now you probably won't need this if you're using Dusk and not using any SC or MP, but he does have a spell. I believe I do believe Roar is a castable spell and it might cost MP, so you might need this regardless if you're using Dusk anyways. Um, if you plan on using Roar, uh, guard charge though, plus one SCT for every time you guard. Grand Guard boosting that, um, uh, the resistance to be essentially getting guard broken, which makes you faint sometimes. Um, and then we're looking at X Guard. X Guard, for an example, I'm going over to Ruto because I have it set on him already. X Guard is going to be one guard is equipped, damage taken during guard minus 50%. Sweet. One HP drops to 50% or lower, guard rate up. Um, this is an increase in guard rate. I believe it's another 10% chance. Um, I am actually going to go look at that right now. Yes, it is another 10% chance to automatically guard attack. So 50% or less HP, 30% chance to guard, which is kind of sick. Um, what we're looking at next, though, is going to be Royal Armor. Uh, actually, you know, Guard Vitals is something new that we've seen, uh, that we talked about before. It is minus 10% critical damage when guarding. Um, so that's going to be of note. But Royal Armor, Royal Armor is something that I definitely want to add on, add on him. It, basically reduce the chance of receiving critical hits by 50%. It essentially makes the attackers that against you have 50% less critical rate. So if they have 50% critical rate in Ailey, they'll have 25% chance crit right now, or, you know, 20% like chance crit rate, 10% now. So this is going to be nice for his damage mitigation overall, because as we know, in, especially in PvP, crits do matter. Um, and if he's taking less of them, all the more survivability. Night Zone. Night Zone is cool. Um, more likely to be attacked. This is a plus two allure stack. So counting along with move, immovable stance, he has plus three right now allure stacks in Ailey. Um, the higher allure stacks you get, the more likely enemies AI are going to be targeting your unit. So we definitely want that on him being a tank and all. 
Uh, frontal physical attack damage plus 10%. Don't care. Frontal physical damage taken though, minus 10%. So as long as he's keeping the enemies in front of him, he will take physical damage or 10% less physical damage taken. Sick. Uh, Night Mastery, that is on Ruto, which we've seen before. That's going to be when enemy type is Knight, which we assume he is. Defense plus 10%, physical attacks against are effective against soldiers. That's essentially Soldier Slayer. And damage from soldiers minus 10%. So any, any soldiers fighting him will have less damage against him. And being a knight, he's going to have 10% more defense. So that's really, really nice. Um, as for what's next, Human Shield. Human Shield is something that we have on him. Um, basically, damage from humans minus 20%, being soldiers, knights, snipers, and slayers. A very, very nice for places like Arena. Now, there's, there's a lot of stuff in PvP that are non humans. So this is pretty much a PvP skill. Um, Auto Fort, banging. Uh, love the continuous plus 20% fort effect. Uh, plus 20% defense. Love that. Love to have it. Um, stone armor. This is going to be continuous stone wall effect. This is essentially minus a continuous minus 20% thunder damage against him. Now, whether that's useful or not for null content, I don't know. But, you know, it's there. Um, I am going to add Awaken onto him. Reason being, I think he's going to be relatively hard to kill. And whenever he gets into that like last 30% HP department, he's going to get this jacked up. First of all, big heal and 50% defense, mind, and move the speed buff. So, 50% to find, 50% defense, 50% mind, and a plus 2 movement speed. Um, just for the defense of mind and the heal, Awaken's going to be super high value for like, you know, I think it's 20 or 40 seconds you get that for. Pretty nutty. Spirit Breath. Um, actually, you know, I skipped over a couple of nates. Earth Mega Drive, Earth Attack Race 2. I don't think we're really that important. Again, his damage... Being a single wielder, sure, it's gonna he's gonna hit hit some some good numbers on his single wielding, but like not he doesn't have the craziest caps, he doesn't have the highest damage output. So is he gonna hit hard on his attacks? Probably, but it's not gonna do that much differential damage on bosses, especially. Um Stone Enhance. This is something that we haven't seen before, and I know we talked about it before. It's another 10% at earth damage, as well as a minus 15% physical attack damage taken, which is gonna stack a lot with his other stuff that I'm gonna put on him. So Keep in mind, Stone Enhance is another stack of 15% damage, or physical damage taken. Spear Breath. Um, I'm going to add this on him. Reason being, um, especially in places like Arena, or, you know, if you have a healer that's using Stardust Heal, that's going to heal him, heal the other units that probably need heal more than him. This is already going to give him a heal, as well as give him three seconds of ST. Why do we need SAT? Well, for his S2 especially. His S2... Reapplying that taunt to the entire team is super high value for, you know, forcing and funneling enemies into his his arms, pretty much. <laughs> um, so be, having them being targeted on him and, and keeping your glass can as your killer alive, um, I think this is really good value for 4 SE. Girls Party and Allure. Allure is going to be in plus one stack, so that's going to be from three going up to four stacks of Allure. Girls Party? Um... Being him being male, more likely to be targeted by enemies. This is going to be another stack of Allure. So this is plus five stacks of Allure, which makes him much, much higher targeted than almost every other unit in the party, as long as you don't have Allure stacks on others. And you can also run reject stacks on others as well. Um, but definitely high value for him. You're seeing, again, offensive prowess, nothing crazy. If, if he's going to do anything or offensive, which in, so we'll see how his mods are after testing. If he's going to do anything for, for damage wise, it's probably going to be an arena, um, anything noticeable. So again, that requires testing. Chivalrous Mindset Spear, which we talked about before. The most notable being the armor gets plus 50% defense. So that's very nice. Um, two handed spear. Love to see that. Honestly, um, that's plus 20% physical damage taken with only one spear is equipped as well as plus 10% crit rate. I mean, yes, it gives damage cap as well, but we don't really care about that. Spear boost. Um, he does have spear boost, spear high boost innate. So the spear high boost specifically is going to be 15% physical attack boost as well as minus 15% physical damage taken. Another stack of that. Sick. Spear boost itself for 4SC is going to be 5% more physical attack damage and 5% more damage, physical damage mitigation. So very nice. I am going to be adding armor boost and armor high boost. Armor boost is going to be 4SC. Armor high boost is going to be 9SC. Um, defense plus 7%. Damage taken for bosses minus 5%. Defense plus 20%. Or defense plus 20%, defense taken from bosses minus 10%. So 
In PvE battles especially, these are going to be super, super useful. Um, even in PvP, having that the innate defense boost is very, very nice. Next, Phalanx. Um, when armor is equipped, which you will have, probably, because he's mainly a tank, takes kill or slayer damage minus 20% and take critical damage minus 20%. This is very nice. Um, anything that has essentially Night Slayer against him, he's going to get minus 20% damage and critical damage taken minus 20%. As we're trying to dodge crits anyways, and he gets, you know, that guard vitals as well, drops his crit damage taken. Um, very, very nice. Um, skill charge 2. I think skill charge 2 is... is Super convenient to have on him for 3 SE free um, because S2 is that big taunt. So definitely, definitely very useful. Indomitable Spirit. When lethal damage is taken, recover 50% HP once per wave. When surviving lethal damage, gain a skill damage plus 30% buff. We don't necessarily care about that lethal damage. I, you know, I keep saying that, but he, he may hit pretty hard after doing this <laughs> um, because he does have a good bit of earth damage boost, especially for stuff places like Arena. But... The most important part is when lethal damage is taken, recover 50% HP once per wave. Why I put Awaken on here is because if he gets into that 30% HP, um, that's going to proc Awaken. And then he'll have to get churned through again in order to proc Indomitable Spirit. But if he gets one shot all the way through that last 30% HP, Indomitable Spirit will, will proc at the same time and as well as proccing Awaken. So no matter what, he's going to get that Awaken boost because Indomitable Spirit will save him and probably a double heal. Um, because this heals them for 9,999 as well as Waken does as well. So definitely very, very nice to use in synergy with that. Celestial Mass. Now this is the next skill I add on here because I, I don't know if I'm always going to use this, but he doesn't have like a crazy way of using up MP. Like I know Shift Gorm himself has that trait where he'll use 50 MP or the unique where he uses 50 MP to like, you know, give you extra unit a big heal. Well, he doesn't have any of that. The only way he's using MP is he's using either if his spells cost something or like roar cost something MP wise, then he might use it there. But I think rather than using Dusk, throwing on Celestial Mass, we're taking 50% less physical damage using a 3P, 3 MP every time for every hit and having on Guard Charge as well. Um, I think that's very nice value for him. So for places like Arena, for even for places like PV, PVE, um, pretty high value. Book of Majesty. This is kind of like a flex spot. I don't necessarily. This is more just like a PV, PVP thing um, because all enemies are non-bosses. If you're going to want to take 10% less damage, throw this on him. But you could stack a bunch of different stuff in him. You could use this 9SC boost mind. You could use this 9SC and put on spell guard. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff. I mean, you could take off some other M SC somewhere else. Take this off. Use Stone World from the Stone World arc. You could use uh, Tempest Dragon's Blessing. You could use um, Steely Intent. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in the game that, you know, I, are useful towards the end game. And I'll show you a couple of those now. Like, we have Uncanny Smile, which adds defense. Of course, it adds machine, but adds defense. And it doesn't matter for him because he doesn't have any Slayer mitigation anyways, except for Phalanx, so nothing crazy. Steely Intent, sure. You can use Anti-Chain Damage, sure, if you have it. Um, Automail Equipped could work for defensive purposes. From Zero especially is a really, really good skill for places like Arena. Like I said before, Tempest Dragon's Blessing. You can use Sulfur Arena for more Allure stacks. Stone World for sure is a very, very good skill. Of course, he already nullifies Piercing, but adding another 20 defense is nice for 11 SC. Um, Christmas Carol definitely is a very good one if you have it from the Christmas arc that just came out in December. Um, I know there's a new formation, I think it's like at the uh, Wall of All Dawn or something that's coming on the new arc you could probably use for that. Not this one, but the other one that's coming out. Like, there are a lot of really good things that you could put on him, um, that I just haven't listed in this build. Um, and that's definitely something to, um, hopefully Buddha does get him and is able to make another tank build. I know he did a great job with the Ship Gorm build that just came out. So definitely look out for that if, if we get that. As for equipment, now I'm going to remove these because this is kind of irrelevant. Um, as for Spears, we do that, Spears. What we have in the game right now, um, the Vine Bee's Perga Spear is going to be our one of our best ones for it just because of that 4-4 strength and defense 80% or 80, 80, 80 defense. 
He also, it also has piercing effects and strength up. So if you're going to be using him, him in a place where, you know, you want that attack power, sure, this is going to be one of the better better uses for him. Um, Celestia Halberd, of course, being a spear, is going to give you know, physical attack damage. Enemies are more likely to faint. Sure. We're usable. Um, Rafaria, again, for attack, sure, that's going to be okay. Arcana Spear Quiddity. This is kind of dope. Um, this will be really good uh, in arena, or not arena, but for tower. Like I mentioned before, if you're using him in tower, it's going to be, you know, get that physical attack, physical attack damage boost, as well as a damage taken boost when guarding and being able to pierce defenses for attack. So uh, not that crazy. If this was a defensive passive at the end here, like, you know, another guard passive or, you know, take damage minus 25%. Sure. Be kind of sick. Um, Dragoon Spike. Is something of note, SCTs plus SCTs B plus 10% just for that as two taunt to get back pretty quickly. Um poison illness and stun resistance plus one is very nice to have on the silver tip spear, as well as it has pretty good defense and mind stats. Um most spears do have some defense stats in them. I'll keep that of note. Chance for physical attack damage plus 50%. This Shogatsu Poem Pine Trident, I believe, was from the Christmas event. Which is pretty crazy. He... 50%, I, I don't remember the chance, I think it's like 1 or 2% for the chance of physical attack damage, and he's only single wield, so this isn't going to happen often, but it is Earth um, attribute, and you can put this on him if you feel like it. Um, honestly, nothing really else that crazy. I, I would pick between the Pergaspear, Celestial Halberd, Rafaria, and Quiddity. Those three. Silvertip Spear, definitely because of the plus three resistances for it, um, but those probably those five spears i'd probably choose from as for armor uh as you know there are some really good armors in the game in godforge so those are the ones we're going to be looking at can i play god gold or some millennia those are nasty those are probably the two best armors in the game outside of like paids um yeah we're gonna stick to those can I play god gold is the best Flat out tank armor in, the, armor in the game. Increases rate of attracting enemy attention. Plus one allure right there. So now you're up to six if you put this on him. Physical damage taken at max plus 40. It's 20% damage taken. Um, anything below it is 10%, I believe. And it does have a, I think it's 20% chance to nullify physical attack, physical damage. I think it's 10 or 20%. I can't remember. But the absolute best armor or tank armor in the game. First of Millennia is not a fair, is not a far shout from that. Physical damage take minus 50% and reduce chance to receive criticals, which stacks again with royal armor. And not additive, but like multiplicative, they're independent stacks. So will work. Give some nice res. And then their defense stats. So this Shine Play Gold again gives 650 HP, 360 defense, which that gets multiplied by plus 50% based on Shiller's mindset spear. Another 270% mind. Crazy. Crystal Man Millennia, not far behind that. But those are the two best armors for sure. As for accessories. Um, let's go through them. I think I have a bunch of favorite that I really, really like. Um, Brutal of the Seven Butterflies, again, boosting HP by a ton, giving, you know, some stats, sure, but giving a continuous regeneration and magic barrier effect. Very nice. Radiant Soul Crystal, giving a bunch of uh, attribute resistances, as well as some stats and some HP plus 10% flat out with SD recovery speed for that S2. Nice. Auto Revive on Ring of Wisdom, nice to have. Um, sphere of four jewels for that, you know, bunch of attribute resist for sure. Um, adventure dog tag with that heal and then your sphere of four jewels, adventure dog tag, adventurous dog tag giving some massive HP. Um, again, adventure dog tag got some massive, some nice, nice heals twice per battle. Um, nothing that crazy around here. I mean, eternal tree you could add for the attack damage. And you know the heal, but it's really not that important. Alt Defensor is one of my favorite defensive items in the game for PvE, especially on boss waves. Defense plus 10%, um, as well as giving a 70 70 mind base. If you're gonna be using Dusk, and if you were here during Ooh, what event was that? Book of the Outside World. Uh this one right here. I don't remember the event. That was pretty recently. Um, uh, but at max MP defense slash mind plus eight percent. This stacks with dusk. So if you're gonna be choosing to use the dusk route, absolutely use that. Allergen Shield, another plus one lore stack. And the next one I'm going to talk about is the Imperial Shield, which if you were here during the White Knight Melza event, um, or, or the Arm Armored Holy Shield is another plus one lore stack. 
Um, there is one more item I wanted to bring up, and that is going to be the one that reduces the guard rate, which is do, do, do the Aegis Shield, I think it is. Shield of Aegis. When on my guard activates, damage taken by 25%. So hopefully he's guarding as much as possible. Um, and when that happens, take even less def less um, damage. Cool. Those are the accessories that I want to put on him. Now, let's go over arcs. There are some arcs in this game that are pretty nasty, and especially him being a knight, um, I think have super high value. So, the first one I wanted to mention is for Arena, places like Theophilus of Lost Magnus. What does this do? So, part of his kit hinders on the fact that he is plus to all, you know, his magic non-flinching from, from magic is dependent on all attribute resistances being positive, pretty much. Um, people like to use Gaze at the End, people like to use Resistance down, debuffs in Arena, so whenever he gets hit with that, this will give, it ignores that and gives him plus 10 to each attribute resistance, so I don't think this is stackable, but it, at base, if he gets afflicted with one of those, he's going to get plus 10 attribute resistance, I think, I think that's generally of note. This is a very good Arena arc anyways, if you do have this, sick. Um, Sky Fortress Solaris is going to give damage taken in the first 20 seconds, battle minus 50%. That's incredibly strong for tank units. Um, of course, it only lasts 20 seconds, but it's just very strong in general. Um, a couple of the SSR arcs that I really, really like is going to are going to be Durando Reborn. I believe this is, um, you know, as the time gets continuous protection effect, which is drops physical attacks by 20%. Um, it also helps from flinching if he's if he's has a status element on him. But the most important one. An LR here, beast of the end, nullifying critical attacks. Um, this essentially gives, makes every critical attack not happen. <laughs> um, makes the enemy fighting him have 0% critical attack rate, um, as well as giving all attribute resistance plus 10. Of course, this is from the ReZero collab. If you don't have it, that's fine. SSR arcs though, Ganon. Huge boost to defense. Um, battle start defense plus 100%. That's crazy. Um, this is one of the best defensive arcs in the game for sure, just for straight up boosting stats. He also gets flinch re resistance for every 10 seconds, for 10 seconds every time he revives. Really, really good. I give you opposite of a Dan. Great for knights, especially for tanks that are knights. Um, getting an extra 5 SCT recovery, armor equipped, another 5 SCT. Becomes less likely to faint. Also gets HP, or when HP is at least 50%, more likely to be targeted. That's plus one lower stack. But when he's below, he gets defensive mind plus 30%. Flat out. This is one of the best tank arcs in the game, without a, without a doubt. One of my favorite arcs too, to use in Arena, for sure. Um, now, there are probably a couple extra, but I'm not really thinking them off the top of my head. Um, Blaze Garden, specifically, is going to give you a ton of HP. Um, just flat out HP plus 20% if you want to make him super, super thick. Thick Boy Granitus, um, but you don't have to do that, obviously. Um, Ancient Weapon Lugan, Lugan is also one of the best tank arcs in the game. Flat defense mine plus 50% that, that applies pre-battle, damage from critical hits minus 50%, and damage from bosses minus 50%. With a huge defense and mine boost with HP, like this is a crazy, crazy defensive arc. Um, and very, very useful in tanks. Um, I think that's probably about it. I, I don't know um, if these will all of all these instances of arcs and equips and skills will all be applicable whenever he comes out, but I'm really, really excited to see what he can bring up. And of course, as I said before, with tanks, he's going to be generally a PvP unit, as well as being very hard con hard content um, support. So being that utility and being that, you know, defensive buffer for the entire team and being a huge drawing attention, a lore tank, um, super useful for a lot of content. And especially if you've ever seen me do like use um <laughs> balin pseudo tank or like gorms with battles just to like you know force proc backstab attacks when bosses are faced a certain way like allure tanks are really really useful in a lot of content so i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you guys got some insight on how to build granitus i will absolutely be trying to pull for him and building him immediately and i think that will be a lot of fun so pop around to the stream whenever i go live with uh after the pulls whenever he comes out but if you're not there, if you're seeing this in, you know, past tense, um, I hope this gives you some insight. So I'll see you guys next time. Later.